ladies and gentlemen. Let me share with you the story of the only college in the world which has been designed by the poor, managed by the poor, and owned by the poor. And this story started 44 years ago, no, 50 years ago. I went to what in India is called the most snobbish, elitist, expensive education in India. The school and college I went to has produced prime ministers, billionaires, politicians. And I was also blessed at that time in 1965 to be the Indian national squash champion. So all the jobs were easy to come by and there was no problem looking for work or what my mother called a good job at that time. But in 1965, there was a famine in Bihar, in a state of Bihar in India. And a very old Gandhian leader asked us as young people to go and help out in the famine. And so out of curiosity, I went to see what the famine was like. Please remember, I went to a very cloistered, protected society who only looked towards New York and Zurich and Delhi. And no one ever looked back to the village. So out of curiosity, I went there and I saw death, starvation, hunger for the first time. And it shook me because I didn't know my own country. So I came back home, told my mother, I'd like to live and work in a village. Mother went into a coma. Because she said, what is this? All the jobs are laid out for you. And now you want to waste your time in a village. I said, uh, I want to give something back to my country. At least I want to give something back to one half of India, which no one knows about <coughs> or cares about, which is India of the villages of Mahatma Gandhi. She said, what do you want to do in a village? No money, no job, no prospect, no security. What are you going to do? I said, I want to be an unskilled laborer digging wells in Rajasthan. She never spoke to me for many years because she felt I'd let my family down. Her biggest fear was, what will I tell the family? You have the best education and now you want to be an unskilled laborer digging wells. I said, I'd like to see if I can manage to do that. So for five years, I was exposed to the most extraordinary knowledge, skills, and wisdom that very, very poor people have. And I thought that this knowledge, skill, and wisdom must be brought into mainstream thinking. This is the knowledge, skills, and wisdom that Mahatma Gandhi talked about in India. Why is it that we have not brought this into mainstream. So I thought I'd start a college only for the poor. So I went to this village called Tilonia. Elders came to me and said, are you running from the police? I said, no. You failed in your exam? I said, no. You couldn't get a government job? I said, no. They were wondering and puzzled, what am I doing here? I go to the best school and college in India and then I want to live in village. Is there something wrong that you're not telling us? I said, no, I want to live and work in this village. 
and start a college only for the poor. So, what did I learn in those five years? I learned there's a difference between literacy and education. I'm sure you've heard what Mark Twain said, never let school interfere with your education. School is what you learn how to read and write. Education is what you get from your family, from your environment, and from your community. So just by this exposure for five years, we redefined professionalism. Who's a professional today? A professional is someone who has a combination of competence, confidence, and belief. To me, a water diviner is a professional. A traditional midwife is a professional because these are the people who are accepted, respected by the community who they serve. So today, this is a quotation I, I reflects the Barefoot College. The illiterate of the 21st century will not be someone who can't read and write, but those who, those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. That is what the Barefoot College is all about. So when they said that you're talking revolutionary stuff, no one's heard of this. You're thinking outside the box, so can you prove it on the ground? So the Barefoot College was built by this gentleman who is the first barefoot architect who still can't read and write today, but he built me the college at $1.50 a square foot. Today, that college is the only college which is fully solar energized. Thank you very much. We have 200 kilowatts of panels on the roof, and for the next 25 years, I have no problem with power. And it is actually installed by a Hindu priest from a nearby ten temple who's only done primary school. But he knows more about solar engineering than anyone I know anywhere in the world. 40 computers work 24 seven of solar power. I have 600 lights, batteries, everything works up solar. We're the most self-sufficient college in rural India today. We have a telephone exchange which is optical fiber cable, also working off solar. Sometimes the uh, speed is faster than Delhi. People don't remember that. And now the college is also experimenting with design. This is a Buckminster Fuller geodesic dome. Someone said, if you want to make geodesic domes, you have to go through a course for five years of architecture. I went to the learnest blacksmith and I said, can you make me the dome? Easy. So he made me the dome and made me use the dome for a variety of purposes. We use it for a community radio station. We use it for a pathology lab. We use it for a station where we reach 50,000 people through these people. And they're all manned by women. So this is a pathology lab. We also have a solar-operated ATM. In case you should ever come to the Barefoot College, you'll have no death of money. We also have an outlet for about 500 artisans, and we sell over $150,000 every year of, art, of 500 artisans who are paid by check. So if they don't know how to read and write, the money stays in the bank, but they have to learn how to read and write. So that's how they, uh, that's the incentive to learn how to read and write. We also preserve the culture of Rajasthan. The culture of Rajasthan is important. It's dying out because of Bollywood music. We have 4,000 hours of music, which is preserved. We are preserving traditional varieties of seed, which is dying also in Rajasthan. And we have a dentist, illiterate. <coughs> Grandmother, she looks after the kids, uh, teeth of 7,000 children. And in six months, if she's trained properly, she said she'll do a root canal. So what have we done? We are demystifying technology. We are decentralizing technology to the hands of very poor people so that you're not dependent on skills 
and knowledge from outside. So, we train them into making sanitary pad units. We train them into hand looms, which are now dying out too. The hand looms of Rajasthan are famous, but they're all dying because of milk cloths. And we also believe that the technology of the people, which is 100 years old, must be preserved, must be respected. If you ask an engineer today, how do you get drinking water into the villages? He'll say, put in a hand pump. That's the only thing he knows. If you ask an old man in the village, what do you do for water? He says, collect rainwater. We collect rainwater for hundreds of years. Why aren't we doing it even now today? So we collect over 400,000 liters of rainwater from the roofs of the college into that tank. That's the stage, but under that, there's a 400,000 liter tank. And the stage is used for a variety of purposes. Like, for instance, when His Holiness the Dalai Lama came to Thelonia, we used this stage for that purpose. If you should come to the Barefoot College, you'll get solar cooked food. And this is a, a cooker made, fabricated by women who are illiterate. Regrettably, they're almost half German because they have to be so precise. Indian women are not very precise, as you know. Hundreds of years ago, they used to collect rainwater. So this technology of collecting rainwater from the roofs, we transferred into the schools. So all the schools now collect rainwater. So we collect over 100 million liters of rainwater and over 50,000 children get access to water because of rain collected underground. In 1975, we started the first schools at night because in the morning, boys and girls would have to look after cattle and sheep and goats. So we thought the only time they had was to go to school at night. That was the only time they had. So we started the night schools of Thelonia in 1975. It was all, now today they're all lit by solar lanterns fabricated in Thelonia. And we have digital schools all over the country today. 75,000 children have gone through those night schools. But the beauty is that more than 80% of them stayed back in the village. We tried to make sure that you do not encourage migration from the rural to the urban. So we trained them to be masons and all these activities which are very useful in Thelonia. And we also do some work in research and technology. So we built the first barefoot solar projector today. And that solar projector was used to show films, like for instance, the one on Malala. the same as she was. They've shot me on the left side of my head. You have prayed for my fast recovery and a new life. Here's Malala Yousafzai. She's appearing at Caesar's Palace. <laughs> I'm not alone, boys. I am many. They can change the world. The film has got stuck somewhere, sorry. She may not be the same as she was. 
They've shot me on the left side of my head. Who has prayed for my fast recovery in a new life. Here's Malala Yousafzai. She's appearing at Caesar's Palace. The movie is he named Malala. I'm not alone, boys. I am many. Sorry, it got stuck. Over 7,000 children from these night schools between 6 and 14 practice in a democratic process to elect a prime minister. The prime minister today is 12 years old. She looks after 20 goats in the morning, but she's prime minister in the evening. She supervises, administers through a cabinet, Minister of Education, Minister of Empowerment, Minister for Water, and all the prime ministers are girls, much to the regret of the boys. The boys have to settle to be leader of the opposition or speaker of the house. Five years ago, she got the world's children's prize from the Queen of Sweden. And the Queen of Sweden was just delighted, couldn't imagine how this girl who'd never been outside of village in her life was so casually adapting herself to the country. So she asked me to find out, where did she get her confidence from? So I asked her, where did she get your confidence from? The girl on the left of the Queen looked at her straight in the eye and said, please tell her I'm the Prime Minister. Wherever there is no newspaper, wherever there is no radio, wherever there is no television, we use puppetry. This man is a 300-year-old Muslim called Joachim Chacha. He's my psychoanalyst, he's my doctor, he's my teacher, he's my lawyer, he's my donor. Solves all my problems for me in the village. And we show about 100,000 shows and tell them about social messages, why you should not beef your wife, why you should send your child to school. These are messages which we give. And he's a legend now because the Indian Postal Service brought out a stamp on them. And of course, the Queen, the Prince of Wales, who's a great supporter of Thelonia, wanted to meet Joachim Chacha. So there you are. 2008, because we had this technology, grassroots Gandhian technology, or bottom-up training people and improving the quality of life. In 2008, we had trained women from Afghanistan and Bhutan. Today, there are over 1,000 women we have trained as solar engineers. What do we do? We go to a village which is non-electrified. We say this is the criteria. Has to be a woman <coughs> who's a grandmother. Has to be a woman who's illiterate. Has to be a woman who stays in that community and not goes out. Woman who's never been to school and college and been endorsed by the community. And then she comes for six months to the Barefoot College. Today, in Africa, because that is the light you get in Africa, we have covered the whole continent of Africa. Light is bad because all the houses are darkness. You have more children but no light. All welcome to that police. We living together six months. 
learning by doing, doing by learning. I think there is something I come here to drink. Something I You want to be engineers? Yeah, difficult job, but I will try to be. Nitagua wanawake kwa sababu hii kazi ya wanawake. Sasa wanao. Hawawezi wakakolofisha kazi wakapeleka kungine. Ila wanaume wanaweza wakakolofisha wakapeleka kwa wanawake wa nje. Nebile must be practice and practice, practice up to six months. I think that our mind is good and clear. We do go our village. Make yeah. It came from different, different countries. But the way we hear now one. So, 40 women every six months come from different countries south of the equator all talking to each other but not understanding a word because they're speaking Jola or French or Spanish, Wolof, but the body language is great. And they are the first and only solar engineers of their country. How do we teach them? Sign language. The written word is not used, the spoken word is not used. Today, they are now the Prime Minister has called them now the Solar Mamas. One of our best partnerships in the area of skills is the training of Solar Mamas. Every year, 80 African women are trained in India to work on solar panels and circuits. After the training, they go back and literally electrify their communities. Each woman is responsible for electrifying 50 houses in her community on return. And you'll be surprised. A necessary condition for the women to be selected is that they be illiterate. Today, the whole continent of Africa has been 
covered by these solar mamas. They require courage. For the first time they've sat on a plane, first time they've left their village in their lives, first time it's strange food, strange weather, strange people, can't, and can't speak your language for six months. And yet at the end of six months, they are solar engineers, they know more about solar engineering than any graduate after five years of university. The Prime Minister wanted to see them and he was delighted to meet them today, the Solar Mamas. And the Barefoot College now has spread all over the world. The Prime Minister of Fiji has declared the first Barefoot College in Fiji. Michelle Bachelet at that time was head of UN Women and she um, gave us money to start the Barefoot Colleges in Africa. And when uh, she was president of Chile, there are three women who came from Chile, and I asked the Indian ambassador, please, please try and get an appointment with the president of Chile. And the Indian ambassador said, are you crazy? It takes six months to meet the president of Chile. I said, try, just give it a shot. Within 24 hours, the president of Chile met the three women who are right now in Thelonia. So today, the footprint of the Barefoot College is all over the world, 93 countries including Afghanistan, Sudan, South Sudan, Somalia. And I'm just wondering why we don't have any solar mama from Israel. What is stopping us from doing that? His Holiness came, saw the project, and he said something very profound. Made a puppet of him too. He said, now that you've shown the Barefoot College working in practice, Let's see if the experts can make it work in theory. Because we are doing everything wrong. We're not following any principles, development strategies. And yet, we are trashing degrees and qualifications. We say you don't need a degree and qualification to be a solar engineer. I spoke like this in a UNESCO seminar in Japan, and this African gets up, huge African, six foot tall. He said, I am the minister for education in Kenya. And Mr. Roy, you're talking nonsense. I said, why minister? He said, you're telling me that the grandmother from a bush who can't read and write can become a solar engineer in six months? I said, yes, minister. Are you trying to tell me that all my institutes of technologies, institutes of uh, uh, are all useless? I said, yes, minister, they're all useless. Because you're not training them to come back to the village. You're training them to go to New York and Zurich. But if they come back to the village, you're not training them to do that. And coming back to a village is a punishment. Why don't we do something about that? So I showed them that film that you saw just now. And I said, now, minister, what do you have to say? He said, come to Kenya. I said, yes, I've already been there. So I have for the last 44 years, looked down on degrees and qualifications. But last year, surprise, surprise, the University of Princeton gave me an honorary degree, first Indian in 40 years. And my, ma and my wife, of course, called me a big fraud for having accepted it, especially after 40 years, I'm saying that you don't want degrees. I'll end with a quotation of Mahatma Gandhi. First, they ignore you. Then they laugh at you, then they fight you, and then you win. Thank you very much.